Hi everyone, just a video to go with some of the uh, Bible notes if you're using them this week, whether that's in life group or for your own study or chatting with someone on the phone about them. But we've started this new series, Walk It Out, um, on Sunday based on 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. Have another read of that just to familiarise yourself with what we're going to be looking at over these next few Sundays. And on the Bible notes together as well. Um, but yeah, this week just wanted to take this theme forward a little bit more for us. So Stephen packed for us this whole idea of works produced by faith, how we live out our faith um, is will show itself through the things that we do, through the work we're doing. And by work, that means just things of life. It may not necessarily be paid work, but it can be. Also, it may be in how we are with our families, how we are with our friends, um, how we go about life. All that we do is produced and is as a result of our faith. So to get us thinking a little bit more, we're going to be looking at some verses in James. So please have a read. I'm not going to read them all out um, now, but have a read. Um, and it's James 2 verses 14 to 26. And it's called Faith and Deeds. And it just takes this whole theme of how we live out our faith um, to another level. Um, and I don't know about you, but faith and, and not faith, sorry, good deeds and living well and doing nice things, doing good deeds for other people is something we often hear about in the world. And um, we don't have to be in church to hear about that. The idea of pay it forward, doing nice things for other people, doing uh, good deeds and selfishly for others isn't just something that we hear about in the church. We hear it out in the world, but something that um, that verse in Thessalonians and these verses in James show us and encourage us to look at is the fact that if we're doing things from a basis of faith, if it's coming from our hearts um, that, that are characterised by our faith, then these good deeds, the things that we do, the work that we do is going to be so much more impactful, it's going to be so much more distinctive when people look at us and see what we do and who we are, um, it will take us to another level with people when our actions, when our works, when our deeds come from our lives of faith. Um, and James, in these verses, they might be familiar to you, they might be completely new verses to you, but James certainly is really clear about how deeds and what we do is so connected to our faith so connected to our faith that we can't almost have one without the other. We can't just live our lives by faith and that's it. There's got to be more to it. Or it's not even that we're living our lives by faith because how we do life is by faith. But it's got to be about more than faith. Faith has got to be something that impacts our whole lives, not just an add-on for a Sunday or when we feel like it needs to be shown in terms of appearances, our faith comes alive. We are alive when our faith isn't just an add on, but when our faith impacts all that we do, all that we are. And our deeds are a massive part of that. Yes, we live by faith and that's got to impact all that we are, all that we do. And James um, uses this example in, in his verses of helping someone who we might see as someone that's poor, someone who's in need, uh, someone in that kind of place that needs that physical need, whether it's clothing, food, shelter, that kind of place. And he even says we can say nice things to them, we can wish them well. I think what's the way he says it? Go in peace, keep warm and well fed. That's a lovely sentiment. We'd all probably say that to someone. And it's not that that isn't a nice thing to say to someone and we shouldn't say that. But actually, what difference do those words have if they're accompanied by action? Not just words, but action. 
and all of that coming out of our faith. And I find it really interesting because, yes, our words are so, so, so important. All of us will be able to think of a time where someone has spoken to us or said something and it's really impacted us either positively or negatively. I'm really interesting if you've got the time after you've finished those verses in James 2, go on to James chapter 3. And it's called Taming the Tongue. And James really unpacks this idea of power of words, the power of our tongue. So, yes, it's important that we say good things. We say the right thing. But actually, those words need to be accompanied by action as well. Read if you've got the chance, read these two bits of James in parallel, in partnership together. Yes, our faith needs action. Our faith needs deeds to come out of it, as we looked at on Sunday. And let's think about the power of our words that, that it plays within that, what part it plays in making our action, in making our deeds even more powerful, even more impactful. I don't know about you, but when I think back to when I became a Christian, and I'm sure so many of us might be able to identify with this, the encounter I had with Jesus was so real, was so powerful. It transformed me from the inside out. People said I looked different. People said I acted differently. People said how I um, kind of did things was different because it came out of my faith. It came out of this encounter I'd had with Jesus and how he wanted me to be and act differently because of him, because of my newfound faith. And for me, that really gets to the crux of what James is getting at here. He's encouraging us to see that Jesus wants us to live our faith out, not just for those times where it might fit well on a Sunday, when we're in life group, when we're talking with other Christians. But actually for us to live our faith out, to live out that encounter we had with Jesus every day, whoever we're seeing, whatever we're doing, that it's showing his love, it's acting out of his love for us not just wanting to be seen to be doing a good deed or doing something nice for someone else. And we, if we're thinking this through and thinking, OK, so Liz, what you're basically telling me is I need to be doing more. I need to be doing more for God, more for Jesus, more to show who he is. I need to be doing more. And it may not mean that. It might mean that we're really open to God using us even more where we're already at work in the areas of our life that we're already doing, whether that's the school run, whether that's the paid work we do, whether that's where we're volunteering, wherever we're doing life, God wants to be a part of that. God wants our faith, our lives that have been transformed by him to be a part of that. So it may not mean doing more. It might mean God gets us to think about what we're already doing in a different way and seeing it in a new way of how God can use us in that place. But it might be more in terms of something completely different that we've never even thought of. If we're really open to this and God transforming our lives by faith, by our faith dictating what we do, then it could mean that we've got to let something go and pick something else up and say, God, I want you to use me in this. I really feel, Lord, that you're leading me to this. But let's keep holding on to the truth that James is really telling us here. That God has got a plan. He does have a plan for every one of us. He wants to direct our actions, our deeds through our faith. But our faith needs action. And James gives some great examples in this passage, and I'm not going to go into it in loads of detail because you can do that and you can read what he's put here. And if you look at the, the notes that accompany this, I've put some passages in the Old Testament that connect in with them that you might want to have a read of as well. If you've got time to just really get into Abraham and Rahab and what they did and why they did it. They are people whose faith was accompanied by action. The two went hand in hand, faith and deeds, faith and action, whatever kind of word you want to use for that, that other part, faith and works. Abraham, it was a potent, potential sacrifice of his son. And Rahab, hiding people, where if she'd been found out, would have been a heavy punishment she'd have had to face. Yet they both acted out of faith, acted out of what God was encouraging them to do. 
both of those examples are not little things. They're quite big things that would have had massive impact on their lives if it, things had gone a different way and did have a massive impact on how they lived out the rest of their lives because of how God used them when their faith went with action, when their faith went with deeds and they were intertwined together. And if you're someone that off the back of this and off the back of Sunday is praying, God, use me, let my deeds, let my work, my works, what I'm doing, be shaped by my faith in you, then we need to be prepared for actually what a big, bold prayer that is. Faith in action is not easy at times. And I'm sure you might be able to sit there and think of times maybe where it hasn't been, or maybe you're newer to faith and, and haven't had that kind of testing, what way am I going to go here moment. Faith in action does mean we will have to make sacrifices at times. We will have to think, what way am I going to go here? What fits with my faith? And often it's not the easiest way that fits with our faith. It might be a difficult way, not an easy or a light thing for us to do. But God is there with us, cheering us on. We're here with you, cheering each other on. And for me, the choice comes down to the life I want to live, the life I want to experience. And James sums it up for me in the final verse of, of this passage. So it's James 2, verse 26. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Wow, what a statement. If you're a Christian and, and the Holy Spirit is with you and you've prayed that prayer, you know and, ex and have experienced what it means for the Holy Spirit to be living within you, helping you, guiding you, feeling alive. You'll know what that means. You'll know, you'll have experienced it. And James is linking that very feeling of being alive with how important deeds are with our faith. That our faith needs deeds, needs works, needs action to be alive. Our faith has got to be about whole life living, whole life action, and our works coming from that. And you might be sat there thinking, well, what can I do? Start by praying. Start by being open to what God wants to lead you into or how he wants to use you in an area that you're already doing, that you're already at work. You might already be someone that prays a lot. Ask God to transform your prayer life to another level, to be prayer that's really action based, that's praying for others. This doesn't, these verses, this idea doesn't mean you need to be running around from pillar to post. It means, God, use me where you want me to be. Let my faith transform my actions, my deeds, where you've called me to be, in my family, in my workplace, with my friends, with my neighbours, in areas that I serve, in areas that I volunteer, or show me a new way, a new place, a new area, if that's what you have for me. Let us not kind of count ourselves out as this, these verses not meaning they're for us. We may not have all the answers right now, but let's be open to where God is calling us to have our faith and deeds and action together. Let's go back to the verse that um, we have for this series and read Paul's words there to the Thessalonians, that our works are produced by our faith. That is what makes us distinctive in living out our lives, living out our lives for God and making him known to others. Let's pray for one another over this season. Let's encourage one another in this season that we're able to live out our lives, walk out our lives, walk it out and be distinctive in how we live our lives of faith for Jesus. I hope that's an encouragement to you today maybe challenging for you today but let's keep praying seeking God on all that he has for us. God bless.